Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. The customer job list stores all of your customers' information and any projects that you may want to track for each customer. You can add customers, edit customer information, delete customers, inactivate customers, and receive reports about your customers all from this list. If you'd like to perform one of these tasks, first bring up the customer job list, and one way to do it is by selecting lists from the menu bar and then choosing the customer job list command. Then just click the customer job button in the lower left corner of this screen and select the command you'd like to perform from the pop-up list that appears. So to create a new customer, for example, roll up to the new command and give that a click. That'll bring up the new customer dialog box. What you can then do is on the address info tab, type in a company name. and then you can add in the contact information. You can also put in a phone number, a fax number, an alternate phone, an alternate contact, and an email address if available. Then in the address section below, you can put in a billing and a shipping address. You can either click into the box and simply press enter to go to the next line and type it in, or you can click the address details button below each box to bring up the edit address information dialog box. And here you can put in the address as you'd like it to appear on bills and shipping information. and then you would just click OK if you use the Edit Address Information dialog box. Now if their shipping address is the same as their billing address, you can click the Copy button to just copy the billing over to the shipping. You can even edit it here if needed. Now once you've filled in the Address Info tab, click the Additional Info tab. Here you can set up additional information, such as the type of customer. And you can either type a new one into this box, or you can select from the drop-down list of types. This allows us to classify customers for reporting purposes. So let's say Morris Landscaping represented some sort of new type of customer. We could just simply enter that in by typing it directly into the box. And then press Tab to move to the next field. If a customer type in this case is not found, meaning that QuickBooks looks in the customer type list, which is where it's finding the information for this dropdown, and it's not there, then we have a few options as to how we can set it up. We can quickly add the information that we just typed to the list. We can click Set Up to bring up the actual customer type list and just add it directly to that list. Or you can click Cancel if perhaps you just made a typo. In this case, since the customer type list is nothing but a single column of the different types, I can just choose Quick Add. But if, for example, I was entering a bill and I entered in a new vendor name, and I saw this prompt, I might want to choose Setup in that particular situation to actually set up the vendor and input their information before entering the first bill. So after you've set up a type, you can specify terms. If you have a sales rep, you can choose them from the rep field. And a preferred send method for invoices, such as email, mail, or none. In the lower left corner, you can choose whether the customer is taxable or non-taxable, and if they are taxable, what tax rate they choose, and we can choose that from the tax item drop-down. If you are a wholesaler and your customers are the retailers who buy from you, you can put your resale number into the resale number box. Also, if there's a pricing level available for that particular customer, you can choose that from the price level drop-down. And once again, price levels and sales tax will be covered in a bit more detail in a later lesson. We can also enter in any custom fields which we have created. And these would just be specialized fields that we create for our own lists, such as a contract number, uh, birthday, spouse's name. And we'll look at defining custom fields in a later lesson as well. Once you've filled in any additional info, you can go to the payment info and input how they would typically pay. So if they have an account number, you could type that in. 
If you wanted to input a credit limit for them, you can type that in as well. If they have a preferred payment method, you can select that. And note that there's information for credit cards. The Job Info tab is used to create new jobs for the customer. And since this isn't a job, this is just a customer, we're going to skip that tab and just click OK. When we do that, they are then added to the customer job list. Now in the future, if you should need to edit the information, one way to do it is to select the customer who you'd like to edit, click Customer Job in the lower left corner, and roll up to Edit Customer Job. Another way is to simply double click on the entry in the list. Here you can change whatever information is necessary, and simply click OK to save the changes. Once again, after you've had a transaction that occurs between you and a customer, you can't delete that customer. You can only inactivate them. However, if you've entered someone in and then are not going to use them, you can select them in the list, click the Customer Job button in the lower left corner, and choose Delete Customer Job to remove them from this list. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.